Hello and welcome to episode number 18, should you buy a stationary bike or use your own bike on a trainer? So in order to ride a bike inside, you need to have a bike. So today I pulled one of our videos from the equipment review inside of the Healthy Knees formula and I'm going to add in a couple of extra details that I want you to know when you're making a decision to either invest in a stationary bike, what are the four things you want to look for, or if you already have a bike, how easy it is to turn it into a stationary bike by mounting it on a trainer. All right, I'll see you inside the video. I'm Robin Robertson, founder of Healthy Knees Coach and international best-selling author. I figure I was born with a crappy pair of knees so that I could help you avoid the mistakes that I made and benefit from the many successes I achieved in my long and sorted knee history. Fast forward past multiple knee surgeries, ultimately with both knees replaced. Plenty of life experience and study into the latest research for knees, and I'm stronger and healthier than I've ever been. I want to help you get there too. I share these lessons with you that will change your knees and probably change your life to give you the strength, stamina, and stability to get back to doing the things that you love. If you suffer from knee pain or want to avoid it altogether, you are in the right place, friend. Let's get started. I'm going to show you what it looks like to set up a bike on a trainer and or move around a stationary bike so that you can judge for yourself which way you want to go. Either way is great as long as your stationary bike is adjustable on the four points that I tell you about and you have a comfortable bike that you can put on a trainer. Not all bikes fit on trainers, and I'll show you the piece that's really important for you to understand if your bike will fit on a trainer. Okay, so when I'm talking about a trainer, what I'm thinking is something like this. This is the Kurt Kinetic Road Machine. It's a very basic trainer. I've had this one for 12 years, 12 years with a lot of use. So they are durable, they're a fluid-based trainer, which means it gives a very quiet ride. And the type of resistance the trainer has is either wind resistance, magnetic resistance, fluid resistance, and I think there's a couple more. I like the fluid because it's so smooth. And this is practically indestructible. Okay, so we set it up, and I'm going to show you how to mount a bike to the trainer. The nice thing is, is that you saw it was folded up and put out of the way. So if your biking area is something that needs to be put away every day or um, occasionally, then this is a nice setup to have. The other huge bonus is that then you have a bike to ride outside. This is my, um, one of my road bikes. I love this bike, and it's so great that I can use it in both places. Another big benefit of a bike on a trainer is the bike should be set up perfectly for you. So you're going to have the same feeling of body position inside as you do outside on your bike. So everything feels really familiar. Okay, so here's what it takes to set up a bike on a trainer. I'm going to go ahead and bring the wheel over here and I set the axle, the skewer, right in the cups of the trainer. It's a little bit of a juggling when you first do it. Slide this guy over. Make sure it's tight. Flip this latch that locks into the screw mechanism. I'm going to start tightening it down. The place where you have to look at your bike frame is right here. Some bike frames have a lip that won't allow you to snug this cup, this cuff, onto the skewer. 
The skewer is the thing that goes through the, the middle of the rear uh, wheel hub. All right, so I've taken the bike off the trainer just to show you a little bit more about the skewer. And the skewer is the stick, essentially, that goes through the hub holding your bike onto the frame. So let me take that off to show you what it looks like and how easy it is to remove. Hopefully yours has a quick release like mine does, which is this little handle thingy. And I'm just unscrewing it from the other side. I've got my hand on the other end. And here we go. So there's a spring on either side. And the springs, the wide end goes toward the outside. So this is what the skewer looks like. And oftentimes a trainer will come with an additional skewer to make sure that these ends fit on the trainer itself. All right, so let me put it back in. But you can see now the bike is just balanced. The frame is balanced on the wheel hub here. All right, without that skewer, that wheel could come off. So let's go ahead and put it back on. Making sure my springs are the right direction. And when you put that skewer on, you wanna make sure that it is firmly secured as you tighten on down the quick release, so not yet. All right, that feels pretty close. And as I tighten it, I'm gonna feel the tension. There we go. Okay, nice and firm, easy to do. I know you can replace the skewer if you need to. Your bike may already fit on one of the trainers. Kirk Kinetic Trainer will send an extra skewer with their trainer, but it doesn't fit on all bikes. So that's the question to ask about your bike frame. If there's a lip right here, that might get you into trouble with fitting it onto a, a trainer. Okay, so I'm tightening it down. I'm gonna give my bike a little jiggle feels really firm and secure. So the next part is to tighten the resistance roller onto the tire. So I just screw the mechanism here. And once the roller touches the tire, I'm gonna give it a one, two, three, and then I'm gonna wiggle the tire. If you hear it squeak, listen to that. Right, that means it's slipping a little bit. So I'm gonna give it another tighten. Okay, now it's nice and steady. The last thing to do is to take the cup, here it is. Usually there's some sort of a lifter for the front tire because right now with the rear tire lifted and the front tire on the ground, it'd kind of be like going downhill all the time. So you wanna pick uh, one of the slots on here that makes it more level or you could always have it so that it goes uphill a little bit. But I like, I prefer to have it level and then just center it on the tire, super easy. Once you're on your bike, the good and the bad of having a road bike on a trainer, there's going to be a little bit of noise from the tire against the trainer. The knobbier your tire, the more noisy it will be. And then to make it easier, harder, you just shift. Right here, I'm just gonna shift. Okay, just got easier. Got easier still. And easier still, and now I'm gonna add on some tension. So it's just like shifting when you're outside. All right, you can even stand on your indoor bike. It's super stable. Feels really good. And here's the thing, when I'm not pedaling, I coast. It's a lot like outside, means I'm working a little less hard than you do on a stationary bike because there's no coasting on a stationary bike. All right, let's take a look at stationary bikes next. Okay, so I put away my bike. You can see the trainer folded up against the wall. They're pretty heavy because they need to be 
um, durable and give you that good base for your bike. Next, I'll show you about rolling a stationary bike. There are lots of different stationary bikes on the market, especially these days. I love the Kaiser and the 3i bike. That's this one because it not only has RPM readout, it picks up your heart rate if you have a heart rate strap on. It also has watts, which is power. I don't have power on my road bike. It doesn't show me that. I do have a meter on there that shows me RPM and will pick up my heart rate, but I don't have watts. And I love training by watts. Not that you have to worry about that in the beginning here in the healthy knees, but it's just something to be aware of. Okay, so these are fairly easy to move as long as you have flat ground to work with. You just tip up onto the rollers and then you can walk your bike wherever you want. And then when you get to the place that you like it, you can kind of scooch it in, put your foot on the front to keep it from rolling forward and then just lower down the back. The thing that I had talked about before is that you want your stationary bike to be able to be adjustable in four places. Your seat up and down, your seat fore aft so you can slide it forward and back, your handlebar up and down, and then your handlebar fore aft. That's moving closer, farther away. Really important to have a good fit for when you're riding. I'm going to go ahead and hop on here. This is generally set up for me. And the nice thing about these bikes is they sometimes, this is a question to ask when you're buying a stationary bike, what kind of pedals does it have? These bikes come with a tow cage on one side and the cleat on the other. So you could wear shoes that have the cleats and clip right into that pedal. I don't have them on right now. So I'll just use the tow cage. On these bikes, um, you will adjust your tension a little differently than I did by shifting my gears on the bike. Usually there's a lever. So on this bike, I'm going to lower the lever or lift the lever to give me easier or harder tension. I actually have a readout on the screen that tells me what gear I am in. And then many other bikes have a knob to turn and it doesn't have a readout. So here's my gear on this bike. I'm in gear eight on the Kaisers. It goes from gear one to 24. And so I can adjust the gear and make it easier, harder that way. Many bikes have that knob and they don't have a gear readout. I love the bikes that have the gear readout because it makes it easier for you to understand when you're getting stronger because you're using a higher gear. And also if I will say add one gear or take one off, that's going to mean make it harder, make it easier. And you have a very easy way to see what you're doing with how I teach the classes. Okay, the other thing that you should know about a stationary bike is that it's like a fixed gear bike. Remember how I coasted on the other bike? If I try to just stop pedaling, I just tried to stop pedaling. My knees keep going, my feet keep going. And you have to get used to that because you'll be pedaling along and you'll think coast and then your knees are going to keep going and it's not going to feel very good at all. So remember that it's a fixed gear bike. You're always pedaling when you're on it. You can choose to slow down. You can choose to stop and stand, but you are always pedaling when the, um, when the wheel is going in the back. There's just no coasting. You can't just stop. You have to either slow down or speed up. Uh, they're, they take up quite a bit of room. They're pretty heavy to move around. It's nice when they have the rollers. It makes it easy to move them, but they are a big bike that takes up quite a bit of space and you can only use them inside. It would be impossible to ride this bike outside. So it's 50-50. It really is what you want to do with your space. Some people prefer having one of these at home because of the great readout it has with watts and RPM and picking up heart rate. 
at home, frankly, I use my bike on a trainer. I like that I have to pedal and earn every pedal stroke. These bikes with a weighted flywheel in the back give a little bit of assist with your pedal. So once you get going, you're getting a little help with that weighted flywheel to keep the momentum. And that's why when, when you go to stop, you can't just stop because it's pushing you a little bit. All right, either bike is great. Any bike is wonderful. I just want to see you on a bike. I hope this helped with making a decision which way you want to go.